Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother Yasin coming at you again with another halaqa summary, insha'Allah bi'ibnillah. So, in last week's halaqa, we spoke about Surah Al Qad, which is Surah number 97 in the Quran. And what we spoke about, again, as always, please make dua for our teacher, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him and accept from him and reward him for his patience with us. Uh, as students and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us as we spoke about in Surah Al-Qadr we said that Surah Al-Qadr remember all of Juz Amma is a Makki Juz meaning it's, it's all compiled of Makki Suwar now if you remember Makki Suwar have a very distinct quality to them in that they are all related to the Iman and the Aqidah and the and really pr- the foundations and the usul of being a Muslim because of the fact that those Sahaba who were in the time of Mecca, those were the, the foundations of the deen that were being built. And so Surah Al-Qadr is no exception to that either. Because here in Surah Al-Qadr, what we are speaking about in ayah number one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-qadr. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with inna. Now, as we've spoken about in different tafsir over the many years, uh, as our teacher explained to us, here inna, inna is, of course, in a literal Arabic fashion, refers to we. And it's not only we, but it's inna harf tawqid, which means that it's a uh, assurance. It's inna, it's an emphasis, right? Inna, we with the emphasis here, the, the noon with the mushaddad on it. Now, here what we're talking about is that this inna, is very distinct in the Qur'an because as we spoke about in Surah Al-Fatih that uh, inna is actually the royal we of power. And the royal we of power in the same way, لِلَّهِ الْمَثْلِ الْأَعْلَى The best example is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the same way that a king or a president or a queen or whatever it might be would refer to themselves as we have decided, we have declared. There was no we, there was only that individual who had decided. But because of the majesty, because of the 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 the, the, the maqam and the, the prestige of the individual deciding that the we is used here. And so it's very normal in, in, in language to be utilized in that. Now, of course, the best example is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're just making these examples to make it easy for our uh, small human brains to be able to comprehend is that the same principle is being applied here in inna. And these are what we talk about the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our teacher explained to us that there are three different types of sifat of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are the sifat al-jamal, sifat al-kamal, and sifat al-jalal. The characteristics that are jamal, the beauty characteristics, the kamal, the perfection characteristics, and the jalal, the majestic characteristics. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word inna, it goes under all three of these main categories are included for inna. Secondly, you go into the second word of the first ayah is inna anzalnahu. Now here, anzalnahu is actually a triple compounded word because you have the verb uh, anzalna, um, where you have the word um, anzal, you have, and then you have, it's been, been made plural, so anzalna, and then at the end of that word, you have the word, it's a ha'ud dhamir, which is a pronoun, which is referring to a third party or a third um, object. And so here, anzalnahu literally means we sent down it. And so what is the it here? What is the pronoun here? Of course, other ayat in the Qur'an explain this uh, in various different um, ayats in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Yusuf, Surah Taha, Surah uh, Hashr, that here, anzalnahu, the it, is specifically referring to the Qur'an. وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ uh, It's specifically referring to the Qur'an. It's not speaking about anything else other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, which is the Qur'an. The other context and important point to mention from an ilm perspective regarding the word anzalna is that in the Qur'an there is the understanding of the usage of the word anzalna, uh, an, um, anzala versus nazala and nazala. And so here when we're talking about this is that anzalna refers to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an from Lawh al Mahfuz, and Lawh al Mahfuz is the place where uh, literally it means where the Lawh, the, the quote unquote tablets, are preserved, Lawh al Mahfuz, and that is above the Samawat. When it goes from the Lawh al Mahfuz to the first heaven, which happens all at once, this is what, when, is, when the word Anzalna is used, right? Anzala. When the word Nazala is used, it refers to when it goes from the first heaven to earth, aka going to the Prophet via Jibreel alayhi salam in segments over time. Of course, we know 
that the Quran was revealed uh, in segments as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Isra 106 and Surah Al-Furqan ayah 32 uh, ala Right, and the same thing. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا لَوْلَا نُزِلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدَةً كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ. And so we know that when the word نزل is used and uh, نزل is here Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaking about when it is revealed from the first heaven in segments in parts to Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam or any other prophet at that time through Jibreel alayhi salam. And so here when we understand the context of Surah Al-Qadr, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi in laylatil al-Qadr, a night of Al-Qadr, which Al-Qadr literally comes from meaning something that is valuable or prestige. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have sent down it, Al-Quran, in the night of Al-Qadr, in, the, in a night of Al-Qadr, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is the reason why the, the, the word nazla is not used, the word the, 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 the word nazla is not used is because how is it that the entire Qur'an was sent down in the night of Al-Qadr? Of course we know that the Qur'an was revealed over the course of 23 years, right? We know that it was revealed to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over a long period of time. It wasn't all at once that it came to him, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so we can see here the word anzalna hu is used specifically because what we're talking about is that in the night of Al-Qadr, that the Qur'an was uh, uh, brought down from Loh al-Mahfuz to the first heaven. And this is an important uh, uh, distinction that we have learned many, many, many years ago, but is brought up again. And as always, of course, we as insan need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. And so that is why it is very important to go over ulum that we have not gone over in a long time, so that we can always keep it fresh in our minds. Next, on top of that, when we talk about the Laylat al-Qadr, Right, it's very interesting to point out here that when we talk about Qadr, Qadr comes from something that has a higher rank, something that has prestige to it. And so we have to keep in mind that one of the sufat, one of the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He is Qadr. And that Jibreel alayhi salam is also Qadr. And that is the and that Quran by itself is also Qadr, meaning it's valuable and prestige and higher in rank. And it was revealed to the Prophet that has Qadr. And then it is revealed to the Ummah that has Qadr. And the Quran in of itself is Qadr as well. And of course we know uh, this Kitab is Mubarakan and is revealed on the night of Mubarakan. And so SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the prestige and the rank that is with this Quran and that is with this Laylat al-Qadr. Uh, second ayah, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And this is where it is a uslub, it is a style that is utilized in the Qur'an in which a topic will be brought up, and then the same topic will be asked uh, in terms of what is that topic, right? And this is a very, very common thing when, uh, in, for example, in Surah Al-Haqa, Al-Haqatu uh, Al-Haqa, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحَاقَ It is what will make you know, what and what adraq, what is مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ What is the Laylatul Qadr? And this is a rhetorical question that is being asked. However, in the Qur'an, there are two distinctions that are utilized here. Is that there is a difference between the word adraq and there is a difference between the word yudriq. And so in some contexts, for example, in Surah Al-Ahzab, ayah number 63, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يُدَرِيكَ لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ تَكُونُ قَرِيبًا and he says, and, and what do you know, yudriqa لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ تَكُونُ قَرِيبًا And what will you know of the Day of Judgment and when it's going to be? وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ keep, keep, in, keep in mind here, this is different than وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And so the difference here is that whenever the question, the rhetorical question, the answer of the rhetorical question is going to be given in the following ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks the word أَدْرَاك However, in the context, for example, when وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ تَكُنُ قَرِيبًا In which the the, the time when the day of judgment is going to be, that is not an answer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us. And so as a result, the word yudriq is mentioned. And so again, this is similar to the difference between anzala and nazala, and here similar to that is that adraq and yudriq. And this brings to light, subhanAllah, the miracle that is the Qur'an. This is not just some words that as the non-Muslims and others who are, uh, who are Udu of our deen say that, oh, this is just something that a, uh, a man who was illiterate spoke in the, uh, in the desert of Arabia. This is a Qur'an that is revealed to Nabi Wasallam from Allah who is Al-Khaliq, who is Al-Alim. And this is not by coincidence that all of these 
uh, different meanings of different words exist. And so I just wanted to touch on that as well, is that وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ What we understand from this is that the answer of what is going to, what the Laylatul Qadr is, is going to be given to us in the following ayat. And it immediately goes into that in ayah number three. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. That Laylatul Qadr, from a literal Arabic standpoint, this ayah literally means, Laylatul Qadr is better than alfi shahr, than a thousand months. Now, an important distinction here is that the Ummah, of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what we've gone ahead and done over a long period of time, over in the past couple hundred years, is that we've become obsessed with this concept of the math and the calculation between, okay, Alfi Shahr, that means it's greater than uh, 83 years and, you know, four months and, you know, uh, it goes on and on and on. And so the the context becomes on the night of Al-Qadr, the last 10 nights of uh, Ramadan, it becomes, oh, if you pray in this night, then it's going to be as if you've prayed for more than 83 years. However, what's important to note here is that this, this, uh, this phrase that is used, khayrun uh, min, is a common phrase that is utilized in the Arabic language. Similarly, we noted some, uh, a similar example when Sayyidina Abu Bakr an was sending reinforcements to Khalid bin Walid an when they were in the process of opening Iraq. And Khalid bin Walid had asked for reinforcements. Abu Bakr an said that I am sending you a, a man who is khayrun min a thousand men. And of course, we know that I was referring to Abu, Abu Qa'qa. Uh, <laughs> and so what we talk about here is what we're talking about is that this is a common uh, uh, phrase that is utilized that is more than something, which means that it is uncountable. It's an expression that is being utilized, which essentially means that it is better than whatever you can imagine. And so here, it's a similar to here is that we should not get caught up in counting how many months it is or how many years it is. It's basically referring to the fact that whatever Laylatul Qadr is, Laylatul Qadr is better than any night that you can ever experience in your entire life. It's better than your entire lifespan put together. Is that, what if you live 50 years? What if you live 100 years? All of that is irrelevant because the expression is that the, the, the night in and of itself is more prestigious and more valuable than any other night that you can imagine. And so we have this concept in the deen, where we know that Yomul Jumu'ah was given only to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have this concept that Laylatul Qadr was given only to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so that's why it is very important to mention throughout this process as well. Um, another context to mention here is that when we talk about the Asbab al-Nuzul, Asbab al-Nuzul is a ilm that is specifically discusses what is the asbab, what is the reasoning of the nuzul, of the revelation of different ayat and different surah in the Qur'an. And so the reason in the asbab and nuzul for this surah, specifically specific surah, Surah Al-Qadr, uh, some ulama, now this uh, hadith that we talked about here, or mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our teacher, he was very specific in mentioning that this hadith is mursal, meaning that it is not the most strong hadith, um, it is just something that is there from an ilm perspective to know, is that uh, they say, there's a story that is regarding this, that they say there was a man who was telling Nabi Wasallam that there was a man who did jihad for a thousand years and the Sahaba who were there were wondering how is that even possible, how somebody could do jihad for a thousand years. And then the surah was revealed to give context as to if you do something in that particular night, it would be greater than a thousand months, uh, quote unquote. Again, this not this story is not strong, it's just something that was mentioned from an ilm perspective. Some ulama as a result of this had said that this surah is a uh, madani surah because of this hadith that is, uh, was in Medina, but this is not the case and uh, our teacher disagreed with this because of the fact that the surah is in fact Makki and so therefore this, uh, this hadith, because it wasn't strong, wasn't something that we were going to go ahead and take from there. So that was the context of what we spoke about in ayah number three. Finally, we, uh, the second last ayah we have is ayah number four. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving more description to answering وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ is that this night is the night in which تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَ that the armies that massive amounts, massive amounts of malaika, massive, massive amounts of malaika, and what ruh, some ulama have said that it might be Jibreel alayhi salam, other ulama have pointed that this could be a special subsect of malaika. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا That they descend فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ But the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرُ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرُ Referring to that Laylatul Qadr, the night of Laylatul Qadr is in fact the night in which the rizq and the qadr is written down for what is the auditing for
for everything that happened in the past year, as well as what is going to happen in the upcoming years, especially as we know in Surah Al-Dukhan, ayah number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fiha yufrahu kullu amrin hakim. And so this is the description of Laylatul Qadr, and as we've spoken about, that different parts of the Qur'an are going to give tafsir of other parts of the Qur'an. And so here we understand that that is the context for Laylatul Qadr. Um, now in terms of when Laylatul Qadr is, of course when we spoke about the seerah of Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu an, we know that Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu an used to swear that Laylatul Qadr is in fact on the 27th night. And a lot of ulama have gotten busy with the math in the Qur'an, right? They'll say that, oh, Laylatul Qadr is nine letters long and it is repeated three times in the surah, so therefore nine times three is 27, and so therefore it has to be on the 27th night. Is that what we're going to make our deen to? Is that what we're going to go ahead and leave our deen down to puzzling and counting and mathematics as our teacher mentioned to us? And so instead, to take the usul and the, the foundation of behind what is the concept behind Laylatul Qadr? What is the maqsad behind Laylatul Qadr? We know that Laylatul Qadr is a night in which we are supposed to connect ourselves to Al-Akhirah. And the pursuit of Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan is also a pursuit to connect us to Al-Khaliq, to connect us to Al-Akhirah, to connect us to Rabbul Alameen. And so it's not so much the specificity of when Laylatul Qadr is, but more so are we being busy with what is our ahwal during that time? Is it that we are discounting these last 10 nights? Are we actually maximizing our effort during these 10 nights? Are we actually connecting ourselves to Al-Akhirah and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to be busy with the, the technicalities of all of these things? And then finally, ayah number five, Salamun hiya hatta matawda'il fajr. And so this is specifically talking about another description and answering وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ is that the salamun hiya Hatta Matla al Fajr is that a description that there will be peace on that uh, um, afterwards after that night he had the, on that night excuse me Hatta um, al Fajr until the time of al Fajr until the appearance of the dawn um, another point to mention here from a tajweed perspective is that from a waqf and ibtida standpoint starting and stopping ilm a lot of people might recite and might say tanazzalu al malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi idhni rabbihim min kulli amrin salam and then they'll stop there as we spoke about in the halaqa this is not a ja is stop it is not a good stop it it is a meaning that you are putting on top of it. Instead, the best waqf and the best uh, uh, stops are the ones that are at the end of the ayat. And so this is what we spoke about when we talk about with Suratul Qadr. And we spoke about how the description of Laylatul Qadr and we spoke about in, in depth the, 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 the difference um, understanding of Suratul Qadr and understanding the technicalities. And again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our teacher. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. This is what we spoke about in last week's halaqa. Jazakumullah khair. This is your brother Yasin checking out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.